All right. <laughs> It's setting up the webinar for Facebook Live. I don't know if we actually are. This happens all the time with this platform. Okay, I'm going to assume that we are live. And uh, give us one more second. And let me just go into Chrome, and I bet you we are. And there we are. So, wow, Jamie, <laughs> this is so amazing to have you finally on my show. I'm so excited to have you here. So excited to be with you. Yeah, I'm very excited today because we have with us the amazing Dr. Love. Dr. Love is in the house. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, known to millions as Dr. Love through her website, Ask Dr. Love which is the web's first and immensely popular relationship advice site since 1995. She is the author of the number one international best-selling Hay House book, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, which has been translated into 34 languages. And oh, Jamie, I'm so happy to have you here. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What a blessing. You just got back from France last night. Yeah, in the middle of the night. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm just so pleased that you, you agreed to join us on this conversation about peace. And I know that you help thousands of people to access peace through reconciliation Really, such a very different way of accessing peace. So why don't you share with us a little bit about your process? You know, it's funny because I, I realized that I think I had a, a PhD in conflict resolution since I was in diapers. And I think then I have to spell it P-E-E-H-D, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> diapers, cute. Right? <laughs> My parents fought constantly. And so I was intervening in their, uh, in their interactions where they were just so at odds. And I really wanted to create peace because my life began with so much disconnection and the opposite of peace because I was born three months early, spent the first three months in a preemie nursery where I was completely alone and disconnected. So my whole life has been about connection. I, I didn't want anyone to suffer the pain that I suffered. So it became my ministry to connect souls, be they on the earth plane or the spirit plane or ones on the earth plane, ones on the spirit plane, didn't matter making a connection and in connection we find peace in disconnection and disharmony we find we do not feel peace so i developed a conflict resolution method that was first published by henry holt and company under the title till death do us part unless i kill you first uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was in 1999 they published that and then that book lays out my method for resolving conflict with anybody, friends, family members, co-workers, kids, spouses, life partners, gay or straight, and the method works. So then when my husband left his body and I discovered we don't die and therefore our relationships need not and should not end with bodily departure, I extended my conflict resolution method to the world of after death communication. And Hay House published, you know, the method, my memoir, I tell the story of my spiritual reconnection with Jean and even a resolution <clears throat> that I needed to wait until Jean left his body in order for us to resolve this issue. Wow. And I talk about that in Love Never Dies. 
And that in fact, often we have to wait until somebody leaves his or her body to work some things out, right? Because yeah, I can see that. And you're so uniquely qualified because you're not only are you a psychologist, but you're also a medium. Yeah, that too. So, <laughs> so I uh, developed this method where I show you how to reconnect, resume the relationship and heal whatever unfinished business you may have, which who doesn't have unfinished business? with somebody who's left his or her body. And Western grief therapy offers us no way of working it out. You know, right. what therapy is your SOL. If they left before you worked it out, your SOL, too bad, too sad. But it's quite the opposite, as I discovered, right? That when you leave your body, you get a life review, as you know, Marbeth. And the life review, review makes you realize all the ways that you screwed up when you were in a body and this primes you to want to work it out. Plus you, your own soul development requires you to make amends with the people mm -hmm. you haven't worked it out with. So it's a win-win. We need to work it out with them and they need to work it out with us in order to evolve. So it's like a 12 step program where they have to come back. And I did have my father come back after he passed to that was so life changing for me. Um, because he had been so really abusive in this lifetime and absent. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I don't even say come back because, you know, now with what we know with the quantum physics research about 95% of our universe being comprised of dark matter or dark energy, not because it's dark evil, but because it doesn't reflect light. So our loved ones are right here in the dark matter and the dark energy. And um, they're just waiting for us to learn how to reconnect with them, which is what I'm, what I teach everyone how to do, you know. You don't, need uh, a, you don't need a channeler. You can reconnect now, and I encourage you to do so because they're waiting. You're they waiting. are, yeah. So where does reincarnation come into this? You know, are they reincarnating, and then uh, how do we still reconnect with them? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that. I, you know, for almost three years, I did the Love Never Dies radio show on the Hay House Network, and... I got so many hundreds of questions around reincarnation because a lot of people believe in reincarnation and say, well, if they're reincarnated, how can you reconnect? Well, here's an analogy that I use, which explains it. You know, obviously the capacity of our limited human brains is limited. We're not gonna really understand all of this till we leave our bodies, right? Yes. But here's how I explain it. Imagine a prism with many facets. In one facet, they can be in spirit, in another facet, they can be in the present. In another facet, they can be in a past life. In another facet, they can be in a future life. It's mind bending, but they're everywhere. The energy is everywhere and all at the same time. Well, that makes, you know, that's that, whoa, that's so interesting because I know that we are limitless beings. Yeah. And we're just actually, we actually feel limited because we feel like we're in this bodily form, but actually, <laughs> This is just an extension of, of who and what we are. And uh, I know angels, you know, when you call on an angel, they're there, whether they could be with, you know, a million people simultaneously. Archangel exactly. Michael is there. Because if you call on I him. think string theory helps us understand some of the amazing properties of energy and, you know, the physical world. It, it's not in any way what we think. So you can have someone who's reincarnated and still with you. It's just, it's all happening at the same time. Wow, that is so, yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. But I hadn't, I, you know, that was something that had, you know, that I was, I was definitely wondering about. I know when my father uh, connected with me, you know, and as I said, I felt like it was a 12-step program because my mom did it uh, afterwards, but, uh, but she came through a medium. But with my father, you know, it was a direct, you know, he reached out through a friend and she told me that he wanted to connect with me. And I really had a lot of resistance to that. Yes, that's because, very common, Marbeth. So they'll come through someone else, sort of slipping in through the back door, because especially if you've been abused emotionally or, yes. sexually, or sexually, there's this natural fear of, of coming close to this person again, thinking you're going to do me more harm. You know, I have an example yeah. that's um, so so profound i could tell you it's a story that i tell in love never dies about uh jean i had a bird named fluffy 
loved our little fluffy, a, a canary, and we couldn't save him. And in the end of his bodily life, I went to see this woman named Lainey, who was a bird breeder, and she tried to save him and she couldn't. It had been quite a few years since I had seen her. I didn't know her personally. And it was the first Good Friday after Jean left his body. And he said, go to Laney's. So I go. And when I get there, I walk in the door and I see there's this bird, uh, a Gouldian finch sitting on a perch, looking very bad, all puffed up and slumped over. And she said, this bird will not make it to nightfall. It hasn't eaten in days and it's so little. If it doesn't get food in it, Within the next few minutes, it's not going to make it. So I said, can I try to save the bird? And she goes, sure, if you want. So I go up to the cage and I press my cheek against the bars and I start to talk to the bird. Now, this is energetic communication because people don't sure. to communicate with birds, right? And it's the same thing we do with spirit. It doesn't sure. matter if we're communicating energetically with an animal or a person on the earth plane or in spirit. It's all the same. So I say out loud so that Lainey will hear me say to the bird, go down and start eating immediately. And the bird listens. And as the bird starts to eat, it scarfs up seeds like a little mini vacuum. It's getting energy and it's chirping and looking good. Now, all of a sudden, I see the bird craning its neck upward like, uh-oh, something's wrong, something's wrong. And I'm aware now that there's a spirit presence surrounding the bird that's making it sick. So I say to the bird, don't worry, go back to eating. I was sent to help Lainey with this spirit. Well, what I first hear is her mother coming through. And the mother says, I am sorry, I was such a weakling and I didn't protect you from him. And I say this to Lainey and she goes, that's my mom. She always called herself a weakling. Well, you know, using figures of speech to validate their presence is typical of those in spirit. Sure. Now, now, the next thing I hear is the father. He says, you have to tell her, listen, I know that you are still afraid of me and you're furious at me and you don't want anything to do with me because I sexually molested you. But I am begging you now to confront me about what I did because my spiritual evolution requires me to face and make peace with you. Wow. And, and you need to do it because you're still frozen in childhood as a wounded little girl. Sure. <clears throat> so I say this to her and we begin what I call my dialoguing with the departed technique. And I facilitate a conversation between her and him. And by the time I leave, she's made peace with her father and the bird survived. So the point being, it's never too late. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow. It's never, never, never too late. And no, it's never too late. You know, my experience with my father, he came through and I was suddenly surrounded with the most amazing love that I had ever experienced in my life. And I was shocked, you know, I mean, this was not the man that I remembered. <laughs> Absolutely. And people really have to experience it to know the minute, like, the week after Jean left his body, I went to get my car repaired. They didn't know me because Jean did the car thing. I go in and I say Jean left his body. And the woman behind the desk introduces herself. She says, I'm Debbie. My husband died, she said, several years ago. With that, her husband starts beating down my door. Tell her, stop making the same mistake with our son that I made because now she's creating the same power struggle with him that I created. Well, oh, I yeah. her and she's flabbergasted and she bursts into tears and she says, it's true. But what struck me is that her husband needed to be out of his body to realize the mistakes he made so that he could make it better. Sure, probably from his life review. The, life. And the, the other message I got from my father was that we had contracted before we were born and that he had always loved me and that he would always love me. And I felt that was true. And I had tears streaming down my face. And yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, so I forgave him. And it yeah. was such a, a powerful, Beautiful. powerful experience. Beautiful. And you know, the thing is, people think, oh, I need a medium, I need a channeler, I need a psychic. You don't. I mean, maybe you need my help to facilitate the resolution, but that's me as a, as a therapist helping you. But in terms of making the reconnection, 
we're all born with the innate ability to send and receive energetic communications, right? We do yeah. it all the time. You stop at a light, you look over at the driver in the neighboring car. The driver always looks back at you because he senses the energetic frequency of your gaze. So sure. you always know when the other is in trouble on the opposite ends of the world, energetic frequencies that they're picking up. How does this, a close life partner know what the other is thinking? Energy. So basically all I teach you how to do is raise your vibration and tune to what I call the spirit channel in your brain so that you can send and receive energetic communications. And it's something we haven't learned to do, but we're all capable of doing. It's just like riding a bike or lifting weights in the gym. You just have to build the psychic muscle to do it. And, you know, I teach you how to do it. Which is wonderful, I know, when you're, when you're at a high enough frequency yeah. and you start to receive information, you know, I like to just open myself to be led by spirit, exactly. and, which is how this World Miracle Peace experience, experiment came into being. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't something that I'd planned, but one day I received that information. It was like, oh, give me another week or so. And I was like, nope, you've got to start May 7th. <laughs> that awesome you're listening you're yeah. listening and and so it's not a mystical it's it, it's just we just tune and we listen and then one of the the greatest things that I'm working with now is the idea that in well when you're disconnected you don't feel peace when you're connected you feel peace and you feel love because your loved ones in spirit are love they're one with God they're yes. one with angel god is love so you know you reconnect with them and you are drowning in love and peace you just are right yeah absolutely one of the things i've been really working with now is this this feeling that i think most people carry that they don't admit you know uh the poet that said most people leave lead lives of quiet desperation yeah the miserable masses. So, you know, you, you've you gone to school, you've earned your degrees, you, you have your profession, your house, you're making all your money. But when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel content. You don't feel happy. You don't feel in peace. You don't feel fulfilled. You feel empty. And you've gotten to the point where what is the What is the point of even trying to achieve something else when I'm just going to feel empty with that? And that emptiness is really a symptom of disconnection disconnection from your loved ones in spirit. So one of the things I'm working with now is helping people who don't necessarily identify with the issue of, oh, I have unfinished business per se, but I'm discontent. And so we use use the reconnection to fill that emptiness inside you. And in the reconnection, you're also able to now use your loved ones in spirit as your guides because they have a better perspective on what you need to shift in order to feel fulfilled. What is your highest and most divine purpose and calling? What do you need to do to feel healed and whole in body, mind, spirit, emotion? So we use the reconnection for this as well. So now you've been working with Jean. Jean passed 11 years ago or wow. more. Wow. And, and you've been working with him as, as your guide, your assistant for all these many years. Is there a time when they need to, to move on and, and uh, replace guides? Oh, How does that work? So that is such an interesting question because, you know, one of the things that I work with in the transdimensional grief resolution method is helping people overcome the false beliefs and the false teachings that block the reconnection. And one of the big ones is that people say, well, you know what? you're preventing them from moving on or you're preventing them from moving into the light if you reconnect with them. So one of the first things that I heard when Jean left his body and often they'll speak in rhymes to make sure you remember the message. What else is there for me to do? It's my full-time occupation to love you. So they don't have any other work of import except to help us to be our guides, to hold our hands as we travel down this bumpy road we call life. This is their holy work. It's not like they're sitting there plucking a harp and we're bothering them. (laughs) 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 Or, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, you're interfering with their holy work. We are their holy work. Got it. Well, I would assume, you know, having felt that immense love from my father, which, you know, and I also, I, I like to think of us as 
as um, like the movie Cocoon, you know, with it, those beautiful light beings that would, would they would put on a zip up into a human suit. <laughs> Did you see the movie? Yeah. yeah. So I like to think of us as these light beings and that, you know, every lifetime we just put on a different human suit and yeah. we step into a different role. But when you recognize that the essence of, of what we are is this immense love, this, this immense light, this, this is who we are. So I love the fact that, that you are helping with that reconnection with, with our loved ones who've passed or the people that we, we most need to heal. That too. You know, and I realize these are taboo topics. People don't want to talk about death and dying. We don't want to talk about, oh, I have unfinished business. But the thing is, when you resolve whatever you've got left over, it's like peeling leeches off of yourself. All this poison comes off of you and you're free and you're light. And then you can be love and you can serve in the way you were meant to serve. As long as you're dragging your sorry ass around with all this unfinished business and this heavy baggage, you're not fully present in your life to love and to serve in the way we're meant to. So, so tell me why you feel, what do you feel is like the, the best way to heal ourselves and our, and our, and our minds, our bodies, our spirits? What, I, what's the best I, way to do that? I say, okay. I really believe that our, our, our job here on the earth plane is to perfect our ability to love ourselves and others. I call this life, our love lab. And, <laughs> Okay, reconnecting with your loved ones in spirit is your fast track to self-love. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say that, you know, not only was I born early, very, very early, I was very abused, okay? I was beaten physically and verbally. And even though Jean was with me for almost 30 years in a body and just showered me with love, in the deepest sense, I didn't love myself. And after he left his body, I found a letter in his drawer. It was mortifying. He described me being like a sieve where no matter how much love he poured on me, it just went through and it didn't last. It was mortifying. And one day I'm in my professional group in the city and I began to weep and I said, listen, I need help. No matter how much success I have, no matter how much money I make, no matter how many best-selling books I publish, deep down, I don't love myself. And all I hear is the voices of my parents buzzing like horrible bees in my ears, telling me how bad I am, how wrong I am. Their, their voices are destroying me and tearing down my self-esteem and my self-love. So in the group, all these famous psychoanalysts say, what is the party line? Oh, tell them to shut the fuck up, you know, tell them, uh, you know, our voices will shout them down. This never, never worked, Marbeth. For me, sure, sure. Any of my patients, it never worked. So I go back from this group in the city and I collapse on my knees and I say to Jean, I'm begging you, please help me, please help me. And the next thing I know, he appears to me as the embodiment of love. He's surrounded in golden light. He takes my face in his hands and he turns me toward him in the light. And he says, Jamie, listen, listen, listen to me. Let my love for you fully enter you. And in that moment, his love for me became my own self-love. And I realized then I needed to wait until Jean left his body in order to be healed. Because now that he was freed from the physical vessel of his body, his love for me could enter me unimpeded. His body, his physical vessel was no longer an impediment. So in order for me to heal and for all of us to heal, I say, reconnect with your loved ones in spirit. They are your fast track to self-love and healing. Well, and, and also it's so important to be able to, well, I find that forgiveness is a huge fast track to self-love and healing as well. Yeah. And that's such an important element in all of our relationships, okay. including our relationship okay. with ourselves. So here's the big thing, because I've kind of gone to war with the concept of forgiveness. And I know you're going to be very um, unforgiving of what I'm going to say. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, but you'll see where I'm going with this. I love it. Where people go a lot of times, and especially in the new age movement where it's all love and light and 
people bury their anger in very shallow graves and say, I've forgiven you when in uh, fact okay. they haven't resolved their issues. So where I like to go is don't even think about forgiving. First, let's work this out. L be angry. Talk about your anger. Be as angry as you need to be and for as long as you need to be. And ultimately, on the other side of the working through is an understanding and an acceptance, which for me is even deeper than the superficial forgiveness that a lot of people lay on themselves when in fact, there's all this seething anger and unresolved business, if that makes sense. Oh, it totally does. But that's not the kind of forgiveness I was talking about. I know about. what you're talking about. You I'm talking about a complete relief. Radical. Radical forgiveness. And, and, and how I access it, because there are things that just seem so unforgivable absolutely. at the time. For me, it's I don't need to do it myself. I ask for help. You know, it's absolutely. like, help me see this another way. Exactly. Help me see what's really going on here. Exactly. Let me perceive exactly. The love exactly. that's behind this. Exactly. Because you're so evolved, Marbeth. You're basically fast tracking <laughs> your understanding and acceptance. Because when you come to the place, one of the things I do in the dialoguing with the departed is I help the person who has unfinished business see the world from the other person's perspective. And when you, like I had a woman who was always abandoned and unloved by her mom and when we dialogued, she suddenly was able to see her mother's own abuse, her mother's own abandonment, and she was able to understand, and it brought such an acceptance and then a forgiveness. It just beautiful. Oh, it, it happens organically. Well, you know what I realized again from that visit with my father was that the behind everything, behind the abuse, behind the abandonment was love. We had agreed before we came, stepped into this, these lives that this was the experience we were going to have. Yeah. So the, the background there, it, everything was like coming from love. I mean, how amazing is that? I know that you have, but you're one of the most evolved beings I've ever known because everything, every word from your mouth, every, every experience that you encounter is always filtered through that lens of love. That's you. Well, that's taken a lot of work. <laughs> but I think it's really. And I think I like that, the lens of love. Because that is how you see everything through that lens. And then it helps you, you know, when you really understand, wow, what did you really feel when you did this? What were you struggling with? It, when you look through the lens of love and you partially identify with the other person, you really, really are not so angry anymore. You're, you're in, a, in a state of acceptance and peace and understanding. Love. Yeah, because when you're so angry with our departed or, you know, for me, um, my most difficult one was my grandfather. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's been a tough one for me. And I think I've, I have fully forgiven him, but there is a little bit of a lack of trust there. There you go. But, you know, and, and you're entitled, one of the things we do in the transdimensional grief resolution method is what I call a supervised visit. So it's like, you know, when you, when you have a child who's been taken out of the home and needs a supervised visitation, same when you're dealing with spirit. You don't feel safe, I, I will help you. So that, you know, you don't have to uh, get as any closer than you wanna get. We can chain this person to, you know, imaginary chains to the chair and, you know, and you're being completely protected. You're not going to. Yeah, because until you do that, you're actually shackled to them. You're dragging them with you wherever you go. That's right. Yeah. Wow, Jamie, this has just flown by. I, I just looked at the time. It's like, wow, how did that happen? <laughs> when you're in spirit, there's no time. And I find that when you're really, really vibrating at the frequency of spirit, you know, half hour is a second as you know. Absolutely. It's been a second. So you're going to be leading the meditation tomorrow and I can't wait. I'm so excited. I, I, I know this is going to be really uh, spectacular. You know, it's great with jet lag. I'm not even in my body. So I'll, <laughs> I'll be leading it from spirit. What time are we doing that again tomorrow? At noon Eastern. At noon. Well, I'll be here. Good. I 
I have to make my computer get back to Eastern time. It still thinks we're in France. So <laughs> I promise I won't tune in in the middle of the night tomorrow. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Jamie. I so appreciate you. And this has just really been wonderful. Love being with you and I appreciate you back a thousandfold. And thank you all for joining us. <laughs>